Oh, what is your question? When you say, sir, that uh, it happened. Sorry. Yeah, it happened to me. Yeah. So should I say that okay, it, could, it may be happening to him now and he feels that okay, let us see. See. And even if I say that Vasna also will drive anyway. See, how can something happen to me is your question. For some people it happens, they don't know the causative factor. They say call it as grace. Okay, right. So is it reproducible? Can it happen to me is the question. Okay, so for that the answer, if something happens to people, they will say it's only grace because a blind man will never be able to understand what his light is. Only when he gets the eyes only he will understand what light is. So th there's no answer. There's no logical step by step how how a blind man can see the light. When the doctor does the surgery, he'll see the light. Mm. Okay, there's no other way, right? It's a it's a completely a total transformation. Like a butter uh, a caterpillar started flying like that. It's a totally different domains. Okay. One thing, sir. When Buddha says that uh, you are the light of yourself. You can only do it. Nobody no, that's what I'm saying. I'm I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. There are two approaches to this. So, one is that everything depends on me. I will do it. That faith we have to have. Otherwise, what happens? We cannot. I'll put some effort. So, Buddha says, reduce your vasanas, do good karma and become free. That's a taking responsibility. Karma means that only. Okay. So, all Vedanta teaching is about anything happens to your life is your karma. Means what? What you did in the past is coming to you now. So, because it is coming to you, know, you know, you have the ability to change it. So, somebody got realized, the Vedantic teaching is that he has done good karma in the past and it has happened. So, the Vedantic teaching is always that it is the karma which brings you the grace. The karma matures, the grace will come. The grace, it appears that, oh, I got a grace, but it, has a, it is a result of some past karma which you have done. It is not that it has happened accidentally. There is nothing happens accidentally in the universe. So, the mechanism here is that what good karma I can do? What can purify me? The Vedantic teaching says you try to do nishkama karma or selfless service. The ultimately the problem for us is the doership. The main problem is the doership. This is the irony, sir, in this verse. When you say that uh, do nishkama karma. Hmm. When you say do, no, no, see, see, no, 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 here, see, see, here, no, no, here, you see, here, here is, there is no irony at all. No. You are finding irony where there is none. Mm. See, somebody says, I have a doership problem. Okay, he has a doership problem. Then you, sh you have to bring effort to bring non doership into you. There is an effort involved. So that effort itself is that doership comes, no? But the effort, somebody is in a disease, to get cured is also effort. So, I have a disease called doership. Okay. And I am doing it for something else. Now, put that effort to reduce the doership. See, you are trying to cure yourself. With the very effect of nishkama karma is with the ego. Nishkama karma is not without ego. With the ego, we will do something. Nishkama karma is I have to become purified. The desire is to for purification. Okay. So, you should drop the desire for purification, then nothing will happen. You will be stagnant like a rock. So, for, for you, if I stay, so for, yeah, yeah, see, the whole purpose is, you have a doership. Now, I say, nothing can you do about it, then you, you are, you are actually paralyzed. Nothing you can do, I mean, even that also is not in domain. No, 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 see, 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 this is an attitude, okay. See, this, please, please, we can always have a lot of attitudes in life. Nothing is possible, I will do, I will be like, whatever is that, right. No, no, I am saying, these are all. These are the actually I have given a two hour lecture on uh, what are the blocks. Okay, there are blocks. There's Vedanta has identified certain blocks that's called Aparada Bhavana. Okay, they are blocks, they are vasanas. The Aparada Pradna, Aparada Bhavana is there, they are called mental blocks. So, these mental blocks, unless they go, the bandha will not get removed. So, now you say, I mean, let us let us look at this. I cannot do anything about it. So, then uh, you are able to just wait. Okay. Right? No, I can do something about it. Then what I should do? Then Vedanta says, if your question is what I should do, try to do Nishkam Karma. No, I have ego. Yes, try to do egoless activity. As you do, that ego will be dissolved. From Tamasik ego to Rajasik ego, it will go into Sattvik ego. No, listen carefully. So, Nishkam Karma is what you do. What is Nishkam Karma? 
surrender all your nishkama karma yoga means what surrender whatever comes to the god you have to do something whatever comes to the god or the feeling of worship first surrender is when you do any action some come something comes some result will come fruits come so fruit is a prasada from god good or bad accept it so you are understand you are detaching yourself from the fruits of action okay no no listen careful no you are not completing allow me to complete so fruits of action is where you start because see a person is just learning to grow so he does start dedicating fruits of action then gradually his mind becomes calmer because fruits of action will agitate him then you do a act with service any act you do this is motivation i want happiness the selfishness is there so you take up some activity small activity which is selfless where there is no motivation for the selfish motivation selfish motivation yes sir to cure all motivations are selfish no 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 see please understand to i have a problem and i want a solution now you say you have a problem be with the problem i can say now vedanta says you have a selfish motivation turn to try to do some, so ultimately all conditioning of the mind programming of the mind so your mind is programmed for selfish action now you start program your mind for unselfish action the reverse programming you try to do if i if i want to help i will ask you what will what is in for me so if i, I if I, I, everything i expect is something return so i will do something for some somebody help somebody i become happy out of it that itself is purifying you if i become uh, if i give sir dana i will do Okay, I will give donation to everybody. So, to help everybody. Correct. So, the, uh, I deserve uh, categorize as so, unselfish. Yes, but you also teach. But I, what is my aim in that? I want to, uh, moksha. That is why I am doing it. Correct, Appa. To desire for moksha is what you frees you. If somebody is ill, okay, desire for health is not a wrong problem. See, people say drop desire for moksha also. It is not correct. You have to have a positive moment in life. the positive moment is from selfish act you try to unselfish act what selfish act you are doing is a conditioning now you are conditioned in society if i recognize that is nothing is uh, uh, unselfish no 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 see here sir, please understand the definition of unselfish act is itself is told very clearly hmm. definition of unselfish is it is a there is a selfish motive to purify yourself yes. that's okay to dra- drop your, somebody is drinking alcohol okay so he is a condition to drink alcohol you tell him don't stop drinking alcohol start working in the field okay so you are saying you are you are, you are programming to work in the field i was programmed to drink alcohol you say yes. it's not that's not the, this this working in the field will improve your health so there is always something better than what you are doing yeah so, so mind it's all mind perspective only beyond mind only we want to are baba first try to address the mind now if you are beyond the mind you want to jump it's like a you are see either you have a, so there is only one way that you have to purify mind and then only you can go beyond mind uh, listen carefully so there is no need to purify the mind you can jump the mind if you can jump the mind you will not ask this question yeah, that is why i am asking how to jump the mind that jumping the mind is not, uh, jumping the mind is not possible for you because jumping the mind all the data you already have all teachings you have heard so you should have jumped hmm. right Vedanta teaching you should have heard jump you are not jumping so that means there are vasanas in the mind which are blocking okay the blocking vasanas are called, the blocking vasanas you have to overcome okay. how to clean the vasana so the blocking vasana vedantic teaching is only one way is nishkama karma okay uh, main vasana for all of us is called doership so you may understand non doership theoretically but still deep inside we have a doership that's why you are asking the question how to jump how to jump means doership you are bringing in yes correct correct no correct. so the doership is the vasana the doership vasana nishkama karma you have to do now nishkama karma is also vasana i have a desire for that yes here is the desire the desire is to drop the doership okay desire is to get well so the doership is a conditioning of the mind if the mind can be conditioned with alcohol mind can be conditioned with also non alcohol so gradually you condition the mind for non doership that is the first level of program so the karma yoga is prescribed as a always a first level activity in spiritual science okay and i i i i know very well that is the right way so there is a desire okay i have a desire okay a desire for uh, uh, non doership 
now if you prescribe me karma yoga that's also desire yes that's a desire that's a desire to get out of the conditioning of the uh, the doership is a conditioning of the mind that conditioning you have to get rid of so then this karma karma you do first you drop the fruits of action or uh, drop the desire for fruits of action then you develop some unselfish interest so i'll i'll help somebody but without expecting anything so initially you expect initially you expect that i'll be happy gradually you'll drop that you just do it as a offering to god so then motivation drops then gradually your mind settles i am not the doer at all this is all arising okay so this is a step by step approach step by step approach and please understand the desire for moksha or desire for doing the desire for uh, self realization is not a desire you should be dropped in fact you should hold on to that desire and you have to do something about it buddha 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 says have the desire have the desire for liberation and work on that others what will happen you will be idling something to happen right one day one time when you were telling okay if somebody is not knowing that the doership and all that then you are telling if i have the idea that yes uh, it is all because of that because of that ignorance and when you have that you will talk about direct path that's what you say now but this is not step by step path there you are so in the direct path please understand direct path is straight away actually it said a person is ripe a person is ripe soul the moment the guru teaches a direct path he will realize it just fruit will fall now what is the definition of ripeness you have to understand it is not magic okay last stage that the person has matured through the karma yoga and devotion service the mind has become pure he is just a ripe fruit just touch it it will fall okay just moment you hear the direct path he will get liberated this is called uttama sadaka now if somebody says i have not go, i have understood i have got the truth and i have understood the truth i am not liberated but sir when you say direct path it's also path so it, what what you say is that as it is getting from other person to him that uh, other person is bringing you liberation uh, no uh, you said no no when so, somebody says and he gets liberated immediately see it is like a, a crow is sitting on the tree and a mango falls is the crow responsible for mango falling no mango is ripened no? mango is ripened just, uh, similarly when the person is ripe a yeah. guru's teaching will just becomes appears to be a causative factor enlightenment is not a causative factor in that sense that is the direct path okay so first let me complete right so there's a this then there are seekers who have understood the truth they have listened to the truth but they feel they are not liberated that i feel i am not liberated is the vasana impression okay everybody is liberated everybody is enlightened atma has no bondage now this vasana is there how to get rid of vasana not uh, i mean the only thing is that the doership to come out of the doership that yes vasana is so the, the doership either you do through knowledge or through the service or both okay so you have to drop the doership the prescribed way is in earlier days the gurukula the teacher will teach first you take care of my house household service he will teach the karma yoga he will teach then only he will give the teaching so the karma yoga ripens that person the guru will be waiting when the person is ripe with the karma yoga then he will give the teaching now what happens there is no concept of karma yoga we want we will get the teaching so then what happens that ripeness is not there through karma yoga okay still residual sense of doership is there inside right that's one level then shravana manana nididhyasa has to happen okay so that nididhyasa will help you to establish the doership has to go see the very question that what i should do indicates there is a doership yes. the residue of doership if the doership is not there then the question itself will not come now how do you remove the doership by non doership non doership is also doership from uh, andir point of view but uh, uh, this is the only way to remove that doership there's no other way no how do you remove the doership Uh, see from mind we can uh, knowledge we can have that's what we know that i'm saying jnana marg you can have oh, i am not doing this this is happening then yeah. then you don't have to ask a question when it will happen see so th- then 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 the, then the question then then the question is uh, 
what is the mechanism that all those questions will go yeah yeah agree right see if, if, you are, if, you are, if you are if you are if you are if you are yeah and then i say that this path is also not in my control then it is contradiction it's a contradiction no see either we take approach see we have to, we can only take two approaches there is nothing in is my hand okay whatever happens let it happen then the question itself is not there that's called surrender even that is also not no no i'm saying yeah correct that, it is good to recognize that okay even this stage also is not uh, no no mm-hmm. see then you have to say then you have to immediately say it's not in my hand it's a path of total surrender mm-hmm. i don't expect anything whatever has to happen that's okay then you are dropping the ego that's what it means yes. now if you ask the question what should happen then there is there is hope that something can be done then you should take the approach of i am the doer so when you are the doer you have to work on doership right there are only two approaches there is no intermediate approach. you cannot take 50% here and 50% there right. are baba nisargadatta maharaj sarud is master for so many years yeah, Give this speeches for the foreigners and all that. So he never says that you go to Ahem and you serve. No, he, he says only ripe students will come here. Huh? Only mature people will come here. Yeah. Other people... Even he was doing bhajana after uh, Correct. also. He Correct. Doing bhajana See, day. you listen to my teaching. Okay? Then you get realized you are mature, mature enough. If you are not mature enough, what will you do? The vastness are still there. Still there. That's the answer. See, I never ask anybody to do service. but i tell this is the teaching and the, the teaching is so clear you have to get realized mm-hmm. and i have seen people also yes. in my own class i have seen people with one talk people get can get it some some of them okay there are many people who are young kids 7 year 8 year old can get it mm-hmm. okay they are maturity samskaras are like that okay the same teaching sitting one person here another person here one person is get it about other get then what is the difference their background now this person what i should tell okay teaching is this much only what you do so then i say you have doership do service right so i can say no don't don't do thing just wait that's also possible just surrender then person cannot surrender she says i have to do something about it tell me what to do about it. <laughs> right to say do nothing and surrender is it easy no sir very, <laughs> very difficult no yeah, that also not in our end <laughs> see see here you don't mix up You, you, it's not, if it is not in your hand, you never don't ask a question. What will happen to me when? That is also not. So then, like then, if you say, either you take. See, there are only two levels. Either you say nothing is in my hand, everything is God's grace, accept it. Okay, then don't you have any questions? You don't have any questions. Mind is peaceful. Ego is gone. questions will come i will never stop there but after that questions every time this happens okay this question also was not in my hand like that only comes okay so then you say it's not in my hand just stay quiet now then you say say i don't have to do anything but again uh, some incidents happen so again i feel like that agitated okay no that's what i'm saying i'm saying you apply whatever is there consistently you say nothing is in my hand i can't do anything let it whatever has to happen happen even thoughts come let it come so apply consistently that's called surrender okay you have to surrender your uh, all thoughts feelings emotions surrender your thoughts all right that's also okay okay the or you say i'll do something about it right then do but you cannot mix these two no mix the two means uh, the first second point then you say sir mm. and uh, we are trying to do something mm. the next thought immediately comes that this uh, what I am trying to do. Hmm. Is that actually I am trying to do it? No, oh, this is also not by this by God's grace only. Uh, just surrender. No, then there is no question left. No. I am not practicing. Then I say this is also God's grace. This is only through Him only will happen. Uh, wait a minute. If I do the wrong thing, I feel like that. Okay, this is also God's grace. It can't happen without that. If I would do it. Wait, 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 wait. I have to class starting. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, if you want to stay, stay for twenty minutes, it's okay. <laughs> Right. No, no problem. You can twenty uh, minutes. Uh, when you are going to have uh, dinner, sir, at the time. dinner. I don't have dinner. I don't take dinner.